it's Jessica Damasa with WTF Health. I'm here at Hims 19 and joining me right now I have Chris Klopp. He is the CEO of Collective Medical. Hey. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Thanks for having me, I'm great. Great, glad to have you. Okay, so for those who may not know Collective Medical, introduce yourselves. What do you guys do in the most non-jargony way possible? Because this is one of those jargony ones. You're going to zing me. If I'm going to zing you. Yeah, you. so let's try. Got it. So we're a Salt Lake, uh, Salt Lake City-based developer of collaborative care management software. That's the jargon. That was so fast. Collaborative care software. Collaborative care management software. Oh so what we actually do <laughs> is we help providers collaborate with one another. We help different care team members, different emergency departments who have never met one another, who have, are totally different organizations, different geographies, but have one thing in common, which is a single relationship to one patient, okay. behave and act and coordinate as though they're on the same team to meet the needs of that patient as efficiently and effectively as possible. Okay, so... Does that make sense? It does make sense. And I want to start because you had given me a little bit of your Genesis story, sure. which really brought this to life for me. So this is a, this is a quick Genesis story. But no, 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 but nonetheless, very effective because I think it really helps me understand like what it is that you're trying to do here and the problem that you're really solving. So go ahead and tell us, how did this start? Like so many great beginnings, our story started with one of our moms. Of course it did. Because moms are awesome. But she wasn't a patient because so many of those stories start with the mom being a patient. Well, actually, technically, I think they probably did with her as a patient. But nevertheless, okay, let's not go on. there. <laughs> so uh, uh, this mother is a social worker in the emergency department. Okay. And 15 years ago, before the opioid epidemic was a thing, before we really understood and we're talking about interoperability as a jargon and a thing, which now it's obviously everywhere yeah, around here. Entire showcase. Yeah, that's right. She realized that patients that she was responsible for were visiting other points of care. She didn't know where, she didn't know who they were visiting, she didn't know when they were going. She also hypothesized that a subset of those were opioid seeking in nature. Okay. So nobody was talking about this, but in our town in Idaho, she saw this. And so being a pretty at cause person, she said, I'm gonna do something about it. So she developed a series of paper and pencil based workflows to manage the care of these patients. She ultimately partnered with some folks at a mass journal in Boston, it worked. So then she said, great, I'm gonna to go to my hospital IT department, have them build this into software. But she was a social worker and health IT departments don't always write software. And so they said, you know, no thanks. So she went to her son who was wrapping up in computer science and another of our good buddies, there were three of us who grew up together and said, do this. And she's this very intimidating lady. And so they said, yes. And, and that was the first version of the software years ago. Okay, and now here we are, fast forward, you guys closed a, what was it, 47 point, 47 and a half million dollar round. That's right. Just a little over a year ago, you Correct. said you had some great investors in there. Kleiner Perkins was one of them. Kleiner Perkins, Bessemer Venture Partners, yeah. Maverick Ventures, Intermountain Healthcare, Kaiser Permanente. I mean, those are some big health systems. Folks. Right. And, and so, I mean, people. awesome. And so, I mean, like, tell me a little bit about, I guess, when you get the feedback from them on the potential of what they see and what you've created, what, what is it? What's the secret sauce that makes your solution so sexy? Because I'll be honest with you, I mean, we hear a lot about this. There's a lot about interoperability. There's a lot about virtual care coordination. Sure. And then we even hear, you know, I mean, on the, the care coordination side, like, well, just give the patient their data. And so that opens up a whole other can of worms, right? Yeah. So, I mean, so tell me what it is like that, that, the feedback that you got from your investors that was the thing where they were like, you know what, this is what makes this seem like a good bet. A few things. One, it works. There's data that suggests that when providers come together and operate as a single unified team on a single patient-specific plan of care, in other words, that they render collective effort, outcomes improve. And they do so at lower expense. And we have extraordinary amounts of data to prove it. Two, since inception, we've never had a single paying customer terminate. Okay. Any of them could. How many customers do you guys have now? Uh, we're north of 800 hospitals in the U.S., okay, tens of thousands of providers, every national health plan in the country, accountable care organizations, skilled nursing facilities, ambulatory, awesome. behavioral health, a lot of different stakeholders. So it's growing. That's awesome. And so where are you guys at as a business now? You had that round from last year. So are you raising again here soon? Are you guys just trying to deploy and scale up? What are you doing? Uh, we're humming along right now. We're good. But we're trying to execute against the strategy. So you asked where are we going? Yes. Everything that you see here related to interoperability is technical interoperability. How do we more efficiently unify the patient record? How do we get data from point A to point B? We're focused on that next step that I think a lot of folks haven't seen yet and aren't paying attention to because they're still rightfully focused on just how do I get the data, which is, so I've got the data, what am I gonna do about it? 
how do I actually coordinate activities between an emergency department and a primary care provider and a skilled nursing facility and a behavioral health facility, even though they all represent different organizations and they've never met one another, but each of them has an essential role. And when we, we talk about social determinants of health, but how do I actually tie in a homeless shelter um, and an employment agency for somebody who's struggling because they have depression and they, have, uh, they struggle from substance abuse disorder? How do I use data to help those individuals rally behind the patient and around the patient and lift them up? Ideally, before they slip through the cracks, and if not that, then pick them up from the crack. Yep. That is an entirely different set of interoperability. We call it clinical interoperability. It's complicated because humans are complicated and workflows, I'm using that jargon, but workflows are totally varied. And so that's what we're focused on. How do you sequence that behavior in an otherwise disintermediated health system? So not Kaiser, not Intermountain, not Geisinger but that requires a high level of coordination to restore this individual who's fallen to a state of health and happiness. And that's what our software does. That's awesome. And so I want to ask you, so staying in this space, so you did a great job of outlining the two different types of interoperability here. I think you did an awesome job of doing Thank that. You. No, really. That's no, it, oh my God, no, really. Long, so <laughs> no, really no, totally great. No, so We're it makes really me want to ask you a question. So from, from the, the interoperability of the data and now the, the interoperability of what do we do with the data when we actually try to treat and save lives right. of people and across the continuum, across the not, continuum just not just in one point of care. So let me ask you, there, from that vantage point, you, as the CEO of a, of a company that's doing this, what do you have your eye on looking forward? Like, what is it like? Are you like that you are looking to integrate in? What new tech? What um, I don't know. What new problem are you trying to solve? Like, what's the next gen of this space that you just outlined so beautifully for us? That's such a hard question to answer without using any jargon well, that I know you'll totally with a little, zing me Try me with it. a little, and if I don't I understand, feel like this is no, I will. Tr if I don't understand it, I'm going to ask for clarification. Okay. Okay? Fair, enough. Fair enough. All right, go. <laughs> I am very focused. We, as an organization, are very focused on this idea of we have lots of interesting data. Uh -huh. More importantly, how do we convert that to derivative insights okay. that are relevant in the moment? To define to me a derivative easier? insight. How do you make it easier for a provider uh -huh. to know what to do in the moment without having to go dig for it and go on a treasure quest okay. with every single patient? Okay. Right? How do I help them understand that they need to order this test and they shouldn't order that test because it was already ordered and that actually they really need to follow up with this particular patient but those three over there are okay right now okay. they're stable how do we start to automate so much of this otherwise extremely tedious care coordination work across the continuum so that we make it easier for them to meet the needs of our most vulnerable members of our community is this maybe an this is probably an oversimplification of an analogy but it's almost like when i book a flight the next thing it asks me on Travelocity is, do you need a car? Need a do you know a hotel? Here are great things to do, right? Is it kind of like that? Coordinate your whole trip for you, yeah, is it right? Kind of like so that? now I have a patient. That's I think that's an awesome analogy. You just came into my emergency department. I'm going to stabilize you. I'm going to I'm going to do the three T's of triage, test, and treat. I'm going to do that really well because I'm an emergency physician, and that's what we do. And then beyond, I'm not actually an emergency physician. But I'm just play one in this interview. I, yeah, that's right. I'm a TV doctor. Uh, I, but beyond that. There are a whole bunch of other stakeholders that need to get involved. Right. Primary care needs to follow up. Maybe I need to have a specialty referral. Uh, the ACO care manager has a really important thing to do for me to help me along my care journey, perhaps with some new chronic condition. How do we tee that up? How do we automate that? How do we make that really easy? Right? Like, I love this phrase of, of, of make it easy for good people to make good decisions. Yeah. Right? And, and so how do we do that? Uh, for the good of the patient, and that how do we so keep stripping out costs? That wasn't too dark. Oh, you did great. I'm not feeling really good no, about this, right? Yeah, now. you're great. I okay, last that. question for you. I'm just curious. Like, I mean, well, and I hate to end on a on a on a down note, but I like uh, I, no, 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 because it's not really a down. So what I want to ask is about the challenges. So yeah. for you to to be able to do something like that, where are your friction points right now, and oh, what are you so guys many. doing? I mean, I'm sure because it's like the, that's the whole point of hymns, right? Is to talk about like how do we get past some of the the basic things that need to work in order to transform healthcare. So what, where are you guys kind of, give me an idea specifically of where you guys are a little bit, you know, you're stuck in the sense that things around you are kind of like conspiring against you and how are you working to get past that? Yeah, great question. So obviously data liquidity is an issue. Yeah. How do you get the right data in the right moment? That's the technical interoperability yeah. piece that I think 
everybody's making a lot of progress against. Yeah. So I am totally encouraged about that. Okay. To me, the much more difficult problem, and not because people are throwing up roadblocks or otherwise, but it's just because it's complicated, it's human, yes. is how do you go into each different health system or each different community and say, here is a community is how we're going to help individuals who have substance abuse disorder, struggle with substance use disorder. Here's how we're going to help newly diagnosed diabetic patients. Here's how we are going to build a clinical pathway or care pathway for uh, uh, pediatric or individuals who are you know struggle with pediatric chronic uh, uh, asthma, right? So, so how do you define that and then how do you automate that yeah. and, and get rid of the phone and the fax machine in the process, which it's like crazy, it's 2019. Like, I don't know if you know anybody that owns a fax machine, but you know, 50 plus percent of like hospital communication is on fax. So how do you do that? That's really hard and yet everybody wants it to happen. I haven't met a provider yet who says, nope, I love my old trusty fax. I'm gonna like dial up the number and I don't do any of that for me. They wanna spend time with their patients and they wanna make sure that their patients are restored to a state of health. Yeah. And so this is, this is what everybody wants. This is the holy grail. So this is what we're focused on. Awesome. Well, Chris, thank you so much. You did a great I job of not using a bunch of jargon, but awesome. And I appreciate talk. your passion. No, I, you, no pep talk needed. This guy right thank here, he's, he's got it. I'm Jessica Damasa with WTF Health. Thanks so much for watching from Hims 19